You know those morning routines of millionaires that people always talk about that if you do the same thing every day or every morning, you're going to be more productive and more successful and things like that? Well, I have certainly tried it in the past and I've noticed that it really doesn't work for me. At least I haven't developed the discipline to make one of those types of standard cookie cutter morning routines or evening routines work for me because a lot of times my days are just not routine. I don't have a standard work day, particularly as an entrepreneur. I can try to create a more standard work day, but I wonder often if I'm just trying to fit myself in a box that I don't necessarily need to be in. Follow me as a nearly failed entrepreneur who's hitting the reset button on her business and bringing it back to life in 90 days. Boss Unbroken. So what I wanted to develop for myself is something that I could stick with a little bit better particularly as I take these baby steps to, you know, grow and develop personally in the space that I'm trying to grow in. So I wanted to develop something that was not so constrained as the typical morning routine, something that, you know, accommodates the fact that every day is different and it still helps me build the right habits and types of productivity measures that allow me to be more consistent because I do believe that consistency is key and consistency helps to drive your habits and those habits then um, help boost your productivity and those, that productivity helps to then, you know, help you towards your goals. So I am developing something that's a little bit different from a normal morning routine. It gives me some ways to make decisions around what I do each day, and it gives me opportunities to build habits around the things that I really hold dear. So those morning routine goals that I'm looking to strive for, I am using this tool to help me to create something that I can be consistent with and I can adhere to a lot more easily than kind of a standard cookie cutter thing. So I created kind of a mind map and a flow chart in Whimsical, which is the kind of flow charting tool that I use between Whimsical and Miro. I use either of those depending on what I'm doing. I haven't really landed on one specific tool for the same thing yet. So let's go. And I've already developed kind of a morning routine and I'll bring you along with me as I develop my nighttime routine, but I'll give you a quick look at how I've set this up and how I'm going to really break out my days. So when thinking about my morning routine, I really wanted to focus on kind of what are the goals that I want to accomplish? What are some of the things that I want to do and make progress in? And how will a solid morning routine help me to prepare myself to be productive during the day? So. And I looked at kind of like my morning routine goals. I decided on a few things. One being I need to sleep better. That is one of the biggest challenges that I have is that I do not have good sleeping habits. And that causes me to stay up way too late and wake up way too late in the day which means that most of the day has passed before I can even get up, get productive, get my head wrapped right. My next morning goal is to be more productive throughout the day. And if I'm sleeping better, I'm hoping that productivity will be a natural consequence of that. Then again, I want to exercise more often. Obviously, health is an issue and health is something that I want to stay focused on. So if I can incorporate more exercise during the week, particularly during the day, that would be awesome. Spend more time spiritually. I'm always focused on making sure that I have a strong connection with God and making sure that I have 
a clear understanding of when he's speaking with me and I can, you know, be guided by his, his spiritual voice. And if I'm not more grounded spiritually, I think that I'm going to have a hard time understanding and knowing his voice versus my own in particular. Eating healthier and more consistently is another goal because I don't eat often. And with some of the health concerns that I have, I need to eat more consistently. And a lot of times I just don't eat enough throughout the day. I certainly am not a morning person. I'm certainly not a breakfast person. So I've got to develop a routine that's going to help me focus on eating healthier and more consistently. I am a lifelong learner, so reading and learning more is always going to be part of my routine and part of the goals that I want to achieve. And staying organized, because I notice that the more stressed I get, the more disorganized I am, and the harder it is for me to contain my thoughts, which obviously impacts my sleep and it impacts my productivity, et cetera. So staying organized is, for me, a pretty strong key in keeping myself on the straight and narrow. Making time for creativity. Creativity is a passion of mine. I think it's a way for me to exercise self-care in my life. So yeah, that's it. Let's see if we can incorporate some of these things into my morning routine and see how it goes. So if you'll remember, I listed out a set of morning goals. Um, One of them was to improve my sleep, which I am terrible at and definitely need to work on. Eat healthier, read, learn more, be more productive, exercise, spiritual connection, and staying organized. All of those things fit into the things that I think that if I start my day with, I can be more productive throughout the day. One of the things that I had on my goals list previously was be more creative. And I kind of took that off of here because I was like, well, it's not necessarily essential to my morning to be more creative. It may be something that I do as part of some time blocking that I do throughout the week or during certain days of the week. So I did take that off of here for a morning routine goal because I don't necessarily have a goal to be creative every single morning. So when I look at uh, these goals, I say, okay, so what actual activities or what tasks can I do in order to be more productive in these areas? So improving sleep, going to bed at a reasonable time. If you know me, (laughs) you know that I do not sleep at night and I have been struggling with insomnia most of my life and I have been known to stay up till 5, 6, 7 a.m. from time to time and just never feel tired. Like it's 12.02 a.m. right now and I don't. But I don't necessarily think that that is helping and supporting some of my other goals for success. So I think going to bed at a reasonable time is a good activity. Waking up after a full eight hours of sleep, I think is good because even when I go to bed, I don't necessarily fall asleep in a timely manner or stay asleep throughout the night. So there's that. Eating healthier. I am not a morning person. So I don't particularly like breakfast. I don't particularly care to eat in the morning. But I believe that if I'm waking up earlier because I'm going to bed earlier, then I will be more inclined to eat a savory breakfast in the morning. I say savory because I've read a lot and seen a lot around um, not having sweet breakfasts in the morning, but having more of a savory breakfast so you're not kind of carb charging your body um, in the morning and it helps you to sustain your energy longer. So definitely that. I'm also not the best at drinking water. Go figure. Me and my healthy lifestyle. (laughs) But yeah, so drinking water is uh, something Yes, this is the bare minimum. The bar is in the basement for me. But these are some of the things that I want to do consistently. I think I can, you know, take a good bite out of and do more often. I'm definitely a type of person who loves to read, loves to learn, 
I go to bed and watching my iPad and watching like software tutorial videos. I wake up watching software tutorial videos. Some people might think it's weird, but I think it's necessary. But, you know, it's something that does come easy to me that I want to keep in my consistent routine, almost like a reward or something that I know is kind of easy for me to adopt. Staying organized, which is kind of like a morning clearing, making my bed. I generally make my bed every day, so I want to keep that habit up. Purge any papers that may have come in throughout the day. Load laundry is not my juge. So loading laundry is going to be on there around staying organized. Improving my spiritual connection, whether that be praying, meditating, verse mapping, things like that. Exercising more often, which I'm terrible at. So say no more. And being more productive during the day. I think that if I set my day up in the morning, it really sets me to focus on what I need to do throughout the day. So this is the kind of a mind map of my morning routine goals. So I'm going to kind of go down and look at the flow chart of how I set these up in a way that allows me the flexibility to adjust things when needed. Because like the key drivers for my morning routine are going to be how well I've slept. When I went to bed, when I get up, have I left things over from the previous day in terms of tasks or clutter or whatever, or do I have any meetings? So those are going to be like the key drivers for my day. And so let's take a look at the flow chart I created. So what we have here is now, mind you, this may look overwhelming to some people and it's just vibes for me. So as you can see, each of the mind map areas, the goals have kind of like, it generates a colored line and those colors correspond to the colors in this routine flow chart. So depending on when I've gone to bed, if that's before 1130, after 12, after one, which is typical, which would be the case today, (laughs) it's 12.06, so I would be in this area. Um, I'm going to ask myself, did I sleep well? Depending on how I've slept, that's going to determine how much exercise I put in for that day. Do I do like 15 minutes of cardio, 10 minutes of strength training, 10 minutes stretch? If I slept well, if I didn't, then it might just be a 10 minute stretch. And you might say, well, if you didn't sleep well or if you have an unhealthy habit, you should do more exercise. Well, that's just not how I'm built. I'm built like this, which is why. I need to exercise more. But I also am built to probably not be as motivated to do anything if I haven't slept well the night before. So if I just put in like a 10-minute stretch or something like that to get my circulation going, that's better than nothing is my logic. And based on that, I will uh, also, if I'm not going to be doing the exercise and the body, Uh, movement, I might just go ahead and reconnect spiritually. At the end of the day, if I have not done what I needed to do to rest the night before, then I probably need to spend some more time with God. (laughs) So uh, we will see. I set it up this way because if I slept well or didn't sleep well, but went to bed really late, that means that I'm probably getting up later the next morning. And I may not have time for a lot of other activities. So I set it up so that I can get some key activities in no matter how well I've slept the night before or what time I went to bed. So that's how that went. What I've also found is that in the morning, I tend to be in my theta state, which is the wavelength of your mind. And when you have your most creative and motivational ideas, you know, you, you have the most innovative ideas when you're in your theta state. And that's when I'm going to make sure that any ideas that I have to add to my task list or to update my task list are done. I'm kind of like in my most productive mind state in the morning, kind of right when I get up. So, I will review my 
task list, review my top three, like which three am I going to focus on for today and make sure that I, you know, kind of mark those out and be focused for that. Of course, getting in more water, depending on how much I've exercised that day or if I have slacked off on the exercise and slept late, whatever the case may be. So um, there's also kind of a bit here around like, you know, do I want to take a shower in the morning or do I just want to get dressed? Then I'm going to make my bed. And if I do all this and it's still before noon, A, that is a miracle. Let's just put a pin in that. But B, that will also dictate how big of a breakfast I might have. I say that if I get up and do all the stuff before noon, I can just have a light, savory breakfast because I know that I'm probably going to be more inclined to eat in the middle of the day, on my second meal or something like that. But if it's after 12, then it kind of shifts my whole meal eating a plan further down because I really don't eat often in a day. I eat once or twice a day, but normally that's because I don't wake up until, you know, 11 or 12 or clock. And so I tend not to have time to have a fuller breakfast, et cetera, et cetera. So if I do all this stuff before noon, I can have a light savory breakfast with the anticipation that I'll have lunch that day. And if I do it afternoon, that I'll have a fuller breakfast, but that will sustain me until dinner, most likely. Based on whether or not I have leftover clutter from the previous day, then I will do whatever it takes to kind of clear that clutter. Or no matter what, there's probably a load of laundry, (laughs) some dishes in the dishwasher, no matter what, some papers to purge that I can put my hands on before I actually sit at my computer. So then I have to also assess, do I have any meetings today? If I have any meetings before noon, then I'm going to review the agenda, take any notes, make sure that, you know, I'm prepared for that meeting in the morning. But if it's after noon, then I can spend a little bit more time prepping or taking care of tasks that are still undone until, you know, the afternoon. And if there are no meetings, then I can have an extra hour of development, uh, listening to a podcast, watching a tutorial video or something like that. And that's it. That will be my morning routine. So a lot of the same types of goals that I have for my morning routine are also goals that I have for my nighttime routine, but they kind of just book in the day a little bit. So again, there's going to be sleep better, eat healthier, read, learn more, improve spiritual connection, stay organized. I think I can improve some creativity or add the creativity uh, piece back to my nighttime routine versus in the morning and be more productive. What I have taken out from the morning routine that is not in the night routine is the exercise. If I exercise in the morning, listen, I barely exercise any time, any day of the week. So if I exercise in the morning, I'm likely not going to need to exercise in the evening time. So I've kind of replaced exercise with creativity because creativity is my passion. And I think that that's going to help to settle my mind and settle my thought process so that I can prepare my body and my mind to sleep. So now I'm going to go ahead and start developing what specific tasks and activities that I'm going to use to achieve these goals. Okay, I think that is a reasonable stopping point for my nighttime routine goals. Um, With sleeping, I think the only thing, the only knob that I can turn is going to bed at a reasonable time, which for me at this time, it's before like 11. I think my more 
Yeah, 11.30. So before 11.30 is goals, sleep goals. Anything before 12 is good for me. (laughs) And then anything after that is we need to work on it. But eating eating healthier would be stopping eating before by 9 p.m. and drinking at least 32 ounces of water that day. I know the recommendation is 64 ounces, but baby steps. Give me a break. So reading, learning more. I think I took off the tutorial videos because there are so much more stimulating than listening to an audiobook or listening to a podcast. And that will get my mind in the right framework to go to bed and um, improving my spiritual connection, gratitude journaling, reflecting throughout the day, praying and meditating uh, in the evening would be very helpful to get my mind in the right state and prepare me for the next day. Staying organized by creating kind of a clearing routine, loading the dishwasher for the day, wiping off the, wiping off the surfaces, drying, folding clothes, things like that. Making time for creativity. Again, I think if I'm either in the craft room kind of positioning things and making things are making sure that the craft room is ready for me to come in and work at any given time. Or once I'm in there, kind of taking a creative project to the next step or phase in this completion, I think is a good thing. And then I'm being more productive. I think there's a lot more productivity things that I need to look at and keep track of in my evening routine than there were in my morning routine. And this is also where I am more energized. So being more productive in the evening in in terms of like doing the tasks that I dreamed up in the morning um, is going to be very helpful for me uh, at this point in time. And I can look back and say, okay, did I do everything I really intended to do or did I get, you know, waylaid in something else? So uh, that is my nighttime routine goals. Now let's develop what my nighttime routine will look like. And just as I did before, I'm going to just fast forward through this so you can see me build it out, but you're not going to have to, you know, suffer through me kind of thinking of everything and building it out uh, myself. Okay, so I think I've got what I need in here. So let's go through it a little bit. So the biggest question is going to be, what time did I stop work? And generally, that is one of the biggest things that keep me up throughout the night. And I will continue to work and work and just one more thing myself to death. And then I look up and it's three o'clock in the morning. So if I stop work before 930, then yay, that is the goal, work goals for 11 or after 12, which means I did not do what I needed to do. So based on when I stop, that determines whether I can have a little extra TV, social media time, if I can get into the craft room and kind of reset things, put things in order. Um, If it's before 11, but after 930, then few chores that I need to take care of, but I might do a little bit of TV, social media time, probably at the same time. And and then if it's after 12, just do a little gratitude journaling and go to bed. <laughs> so then I'm going to ask myself, well, did I complete my top three? If I've done all this and it's still after 12, when I didn't complete my top three, then, hey, there's a problem. There's going to be a little bit different path that I'm going to take for my evening routine. So it will be checking off a completed task. If I did complete my top three, check them off. 
review, add to the weekly task list because inevitably something has come up during the day and I'm going to have to, you know, shuffle things around for that weekly task list. But if I did complete it, yay, I get some reward of some creative project time. Then if I did not, then review and add to what the task list currently says, do some prayer and meditation, get my mind right so that I can be more productive tomorrow. Also, I'm going to double check to see if I stopped eating before nine. So if I ate after nine, then I'm going to make sure, double sure, that I got the full 32 ounces of water because I'm probably need to hydrate and flush my system, whatever the case may be. It seems punishment enough because I don't like water. But <laughs> even if I did, <laughs> even if I did keep myself from eating before nine, then I'm still going to try to make sure that I make my 32 ounces uh, water t- a day. And I'm going to do some extra gratitude journaling because, yay, I have discipline. And I'm going to load the dishwasher. Is it, have I done all of this stuff before 11.30? That's the question. If I have not, then I'm just going to do my evening clearing routine and go to bed. If I have miraculously been able to do all of this evening routine plus whatever I did throughout the middle of the day before 11.30, then that's not right. I probably should say before 10.30 because then I get an extra hour podcast and my target for bedtime is 11.30. So that gives me an extra hour of podcast audio listening time, kind of decompressing, you know, calming my mind. And I can do that for an hour and complete my evening clearing routine that would set me up for an 1130 bedtime, which is excellent for me and rarely happens. I normally do not go to bed the same day that I wake up. And that's a problem. So this is how I set up my nighttime routine. On the next episode of Boss Unbroken, all of this is well and good and it looks pretty on paper and it probably looks complex and crazy, but none of it really works without the proper systems to hold myself accountable. I'm not going to be walking around with a sheet of this flow chart with me all the time. So what I'm going to do in the next episode is actually look at this flow chart and see, okay, where can I actually inject some systems? Where can I actually set up some habits, set some alarms, do some automations, or even set up a habit tracker to remind myself to do these things and stay on track? So that's what I'm going to do next time, and we will see uh, what comes of it and see how it starts to work out for me and if I become a little bit more disciplined, a little bit more consistent with the things that I'm trying to do every day because we have got to turn this ship around and get back to the the road of success. So see you next time.